What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now today, we're a quarter of the way through through the season. Well, I've tried to work this out, but I don't think 50, 15 is a quarter of 70. I still can't do the maths on this one. But hey, if you guys are new, subscribe. If you like IPL, subscribe. If you like cricket, just subscribe. We're here today, the 15th IPL match, DC versus LSG, Daly Capitals, of course, versus the Lucknow Super Giants. And Daly Capitals, they put another loss on the board. Lucknow Super Giants, too good in the end, too strong. Um, just some really impressive bowling from a LSG and some good hitting gets them over the line. Really, they're looking like arguably the strongest team of the competition. That KL Rahul, Quinton de Kock opening partnership is deadly. It's real and it's scary, <laughs> to be honest. I would not want to play Lucknow in any sort of, you know, playoff game because going against Quinton and Rahul is going to be a nightmare at the top of the order. Um, if you don't get either of them out early, if in fact, if you don't get both of them out early, the game's over. <laughs> it almost feels like, like they're just going to go set up their team and put them in a winning position, um, which they did here. So, hey, I'm not going to waste... Oh, wait, no. Player of the match, Quinton de Kock, 80 or 52, as we just spoke about. He is... He's still a gun. I mean, it's not like anyone was doubting Quinton de Kock. He is still one of the best white form batsmen at the top of the order in the world. I mean, let's not beat around the bush. Quinton de Kock, um, AB, Faf C, like all of these guys could easily still play um, international cricket, probably at least in both of the white ball formats. I know de Kock still does, but obviously Faf doesn't anymore. AB doesn't anymore. All three of those guys could still comfortably fit into South Africa's best team in all three formats. But, you know, they're not going to play test cricket, obviously. They need to be playing white form. South Africa cricket up. I love the players, but the board really needs to sort itself out. Maybe we'll leave that for another time. All right. Daly Capitals into bat first. Pretty sure. And David Warner. Davey Warner, of course, takes Timmy Seifert's spot opening. It's a pretty obvious change. Tim Seifert did nothing for the first few games. Um... And then they get the return of their, their big superstar, David Warner, of course. Pretty sure, though, 61 of 34, 9 fours, 2 sixes was really good. He just seemed to get to 60 in a really quick amount of time. Um, I think the power play had just ended, and he was all of a sudden already on 50. And I thought, Pritvi, mate, is this... You, you look like you're batting out there like Ricky Ponting right now. Like, what's going on? He looked like his coach, which you can probably tell that he's probably learnt a lot of Ricky Ponting. Pretty sure. And he plays a pull shot like Ricky. They're the same, you know, similar heights, um, similar sort of players. So, you know, I mean, if Pretty sure can become half of what Ricky Ponting was, then India have got a superstar, of course. David Warner, look, not the return he would have wanted. Four off 12, but what can you do, man? Your first game back, um, Pretty sure, at the end of the day, was taking literally every delivery of strike. And as soon as Warner got to face a ball... It was the last ball of the over, and he's going to block it out. Um, so maybe not, you know, the greatest, but Pritby still gets 61, so I'm sure they're happy with that. Um, yeah, Warner going for four was a pretty average shot. Good bowling from Bishnoi. Um, he really seems to unsettle Warner. Rombin Power going for three off 10. Just pretty rubbish. Richard Pant not out 39 off 36. Was the real anchor towards this late innings. And I mean, Safaraz Khan as well. Of course, it was, you know, 36 off 28. That's just as good. But Richard Pant really just, he just came to the crease and he didn't look to put the first ball for six like he usually does or looks to put the ball and make runs, get off the mark early. He was just rotating strike with Safaraz Khan. If there's a boundary, there's a boundary. Put it away. But if there's not, let's just take a single or run a hard two. And that's what that's exactly what Rishabh has been needing to do more of, especially as a captain. You know, I think before Rishabh was a captain and before he was, you know, this touted superstar that is always expected to go out there and put on runs, he would always just go out there, play with freedom and try and put every ball over the rope, which you just can't do anymore. He could do it at the start of his career because no one knew how to bowl to him. But now, I mean, you're one of the most regarded big hitters in the, in the, in, in the world of cricket. So, I mean, he still put two sixes, three fours. That's better than what Warner and Ron Van Powell did. So, um, yeah, just a solid knock. A really solid knock. Safaraz Khan, 36 off 28, three fours. Again, just a real similar inning to Rishabh. They just wanted to dig deep, find as many runs as possible, and 
you know, getting to 150, not an amazing total, but they almost got the win. So it shows that about par on this pitch would have been anywhere from 150 to 165, 170. Uh, would have been a really solid score on this deck. Of course, you would have rathered 170, but you can't always get what you want, can you? Into the Alice G bowlers, Jason Holder, the big fella, none for 30 or 4. Chris Napa Gotham, uh, one for 23 or 4. I didn't even know he could bowl that well. He actually looked pretty good out there with the ball in hand. Uh, Avesh Khan, none for 32 off three. Bishnoi bowled really, really well. Two for 22 off four. And I know a lot of people love to, you know, you know, talk down on Kyle Rahul as a captain and say that he doesn't make great decisions. His bowling changes are always really bad. His fielding changes are bad. But we've got to give him credit um, for how he's using this team at the moment. He's, he's doing all the right bowling changes. He got Bishnoi on at the perfect time. It slowed down any sort of run momentum uh, that Pritby Shaw was making. And really classy bowling from Bishnoi. He took a bit of pace off the ball. He looked really good. Um, AJ Ty, well, it's just not a great tournament for the big fella so far either. None for 28 off three. I don't know. I'm trying to think. What other backup bowlers do LSG have? I can't think of any other backup bowlers, but... I think they'd be willing to, you know, he's probably the only weak spot in their team at the moment is AJ Ty not bowling incredibly well. And I mean, AJ Ty and Avesh Khan both didn't bowl very well at all, and they still get the win. It's a pretty impressive effort from LSG. Krunal Pandya also bowled two overs. Why? No, he bowled okay, none for 12 off two. Six and over, that's okay. Look, I actually thought he bowled kind of well. And Krunal, and, you know, what? something was funny is <laughs> every time out there on the pitch, I see Krunal, and then I see a little Deepak Hooter somewhere in the background. I just think sometimes, are they faking being friends now just for the team's sake, or are they actually buddies now? It would be weird if they were friends now, considering all the past history, but it would also be kind of wholesome to see them be friends again. I don't know. Um, Krunal, but I am watching you with a sharp eye, Mr. Pandya, so you don't do anything to Deepak, and we won't do anything to you, my friend. Um, all right. <laughs> LSG into bat, target of 150 to get the W. And they do it with two deliveries to remain, so a good game in the end. Kale Rahul gone for 24 of 25, a 4 of 6. Look, didn't bat too well, but he was just trying to stay in there and rotate the strike and give it back to the hot hand of, of uh, Quinton de Kock. He was going bananas, and he made 80 of 52, 9 fours, 2 sixes. You know, they comfortably go on and win this match, Alice G, if, if De Kock stays out there till the end. Now, I know that's an obvious statement, but G, he was looking good until he just he just skied one out in the deep. And I thought, no, Quinton. Quinton, I was rooting for you to get 100 here, but he didn't. So it was disappointing. Evan Lewis gone for 5 off 13. The man Deepak Hooter, 11 off 13. Uh, Deepak Hooter's best friend, Krunal, not out for 19. He was out there in the end. Big K Pandya. They were actually batting together at one point, Deepak Huda and Pandya. And I was thinking, this is awkward. <laughs> they might run each other out. Deepak might say, yes, yes, give me a run. And then Krunal's like, no, mate, go back. And then he, and then you get run out. So luckily, no mishaps there. Very lucky. <laughs> and Ayush Badoni, who hit the winning runs, 10 off 3, 1 4, 1 6. <sighs> this is a strong batting order. Very strong batting order. Guess who was in next? The big man himself, Jason Holder. Gotham can bat. Guess what? AJ Ty is very capable with the bat. So is Bishnoi as well. And I think, you know, didn't what didn't Avesh Khan bat at like number eight and nine for DC last year as well? So he's someone who's obviously has some capability to at least hit the ball. As long as they do not bat like Arshdeep Singh, then you should be okay. Because if you have not seen Arshdeep Singh bat... It's, it's worrying. <laughs> it's like he's never practiced batting in his life. Um, but hey, they get it done really comfortably in the end. Just a really good team result. They're playing for each other. They're playing as a team. They look they look, they look, look the best team out there at the moment, don't they? Fizz Rahman, none for 26 off four. He impressed me without taking a wicket. He's obviously still got a hell of a lot to prove, but he's a good starting piece for, for DC. Lala Yadav took a wicket, one for 21 off four. Oh, okay. Lord Shuttle, 1 for 29 off 3.4. Unric Nokia, or Nokia, he actually bowled two no balls in a row and then was dragged. Wasn't allowed to bowl for the rest of the game. Um, none for 35 off 2.2. It's probably a good thing because he was bowling really, really bad. 
Uh, Axar Patel, none for 11 off two. Look, I know that there was two deliveries remaining, but I just I, I, I didn't understand why someone like Axar Patel bowls two overs. He only goes for 5.5 and over, and then you're bowling a guy like... Now, this might sound harsh because he bowled really well, but Lalit Yadav, you know, who bowls... He bowled four overs, one for 21 or four. That's an amazing game. You know what? Actually, I take that back. Lali, you bowled amazing. Then uh, you know what? Great captaincy, I think. Actually, um, from from fuck, who's their captain now? Rishabh, of course. So look, you know what? I take that back. You bowled really well, Yadav. Um, but I, I I just like seeing Axar bowl. I think he's a great bowler. So I really want to see him bowl because he doesn't get to bat very often either. So. No, I just, I just want the best for the man, Axar Patel. And Kuldeep Yadav, talking about getting the best out of yourself. This man does it. He's been doing it every night now. Two for 31 off 3.4. He had to come on after Nordiki had bowled two no balls in a row. It was a free hit. And Yadav kept his composure and only let through a single. How, how, how has India neglected this guy? You know, playing in an ODI World Cup in 2019. The same thing goes for Yuzi Chahal. It's just like, how do you enter a World Cup without two of these guys? Um, you know, the T20 World Cup in Australia this year, they will bring Yuzi for sure. Yuzi better be in the squad, otherwise there will be problems. Um, Kuldeep better be in the squad as well. I'd almost have Kuldeep in front of Aksar Patel in Australian conditions. If it was in India or Pakistan or any sort of subcontinent spinning pitch, then I would choose Aksar Patel. But since it's in Australia, the ball does a lot. I'd be getting cool deep in there as well with Yuzi. Um, obviously, Jadeja will probably bowl one to two overs a game as well. So, I don't think there's really room for a guy like Patel now that I think... Well, you've got to fit Ashwin in as well. Mm, but it, maybe not T20 for Ashwin. It's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm excited to see uh, what India does because they've got so much depth. But they had such a bad World Cup last year. It'll be interesting to see how much they change. Um... I'm excited for the... I just love cricket. I'm excited for the World Cup. Um, all right. So, LSG, get the W. Let's move on to the table. Now, speaking of... <laughs> speaking of the table. Um, firstly, thank you to everyone who let me know in the comments that I was reading the table around the wrong way. I <laughs> So, the table goes, this is their last five right here. This is their most recent game, not the tick. Because I thought it was the other way around. I thought they meant, you know, these ones were the most recent. And then that was their first game. But it was the other way around. I was reading it wrong. And that's why I kept going to the IPL website <laughs> to, to get the real table. But this is it. So thank you to everyone who let me know that. Um, you've saved me a lot of time and hassle now. Uh, Kolkata in first. Four, uh, three and one. LSG, three and one. Uh, Rajasthan Royals. Only played the three games. But they're two and one. GT have only played two games. Obviously, they play the Punjab Kings tonight. So, is that tonight or tomorrow? We'll, we'll check the schedule in a second. RCB in 6, DC in 7. Worrying. CSK in 8th. Very worrying. And to make it even worse, Mumbai Indians are in ninth. That is an even bigger worry. I mean, all of the teams that I tipped to be at the top are down the bottom. Except for Sunrisers, because that's where I had them. Um, near the bottom, or if not in the bottom. But... You have to give credit to where it's due. These, you know, four teams, two of the new teams making a huge impact, um, and Punjab and RCB both equal with two and one. So, yeah, DC and CSK and Mumbai are going to have to find some wins ASAP. Because, yes, it's, you know, it's a long season, whether you say or not, but you, they need to get some wins very, very soon. Into the stats, let's have a look. The Orange Cap, Joss Butler, well ahead. You've got DeCock, you've got Rahul, and you've got Deepak Huda. You've got three LSG, uh, yeah, LSG names in a row. That is a fair effort. Uh, the wickets, Umesh Yadav with nine. Avesh Khan with seven. He didn't even take a wicket last night, and he's still second. That's a fair effort. Yuzi Chahal, bowling amazing. Cooled it, Yadav. Hey, that warms my heart to see the man Yuzi Chahal, Umesh Yadav, and Cool Deep Yadav in the top three for most wickets. And Avesh Khan hasn't even played an international game, and he's second. Rahul Chaha, the king's man. He's got six wickets. Time or Mills. Whatever. And Hasaranga, the man Hasi, is on there with six as well. Shout out to the man Hasaranga. The little man himself. The little legend himself, in fact. Um, all right. Tonight's game is indeed the Punjab Kings versus Gujarat Titans. What's the win predictor saying? Woo-wee! All right. 
52% for us. I'd be willing to say we're a 99.9% .9 chance to win, but that's just me. Uh, no bias involved at all there. Um, okay. So, yep, that game. And then tomorrow we have a double header. Nice. CSK, SRH, RCB, and Mumbai. That'll be a huge game. Um, but hey, that will cap it off. LSG get another win. They look good. DC, not so much. There's some worrying signs early. But again, there's still plenty of games to play. Let's go Punjab for tonight. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.